In the second episode of my Melbourne trip, I'm not taking you to buy Birkin bag and MS or buy some Prada clothes. No, 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 no. Oh, don't even think about it. Not Bugatti. And here we are. I'm taking you to the Melbourne at Collins. Well, I mean the Sobota Hotel at Collins. Well, it's about because I know there are many Australian Open players living in this hotel during the Australian Open tennis season. But in fact, I've never met one of them. Any one of them, you know. Well, you do see a few decorations of the Australian Open. The room that I stayed is what I call the most elementary level of the suite in the Sobota Hotel, but as you can see, it's not that small considering it's an elementary suite in the hotel. But you wouldn't expect that there will be no separate areas of the living room and a bedroom. Well, another surprise for me is that I have to manually pull the curtains instead of those new hotels where you could just. Click a few buttons and then it will be closed automatically. But you get to see this beautiful night view of the Melbourne CBD, like the Federation Square and Flinders Street Station. Equally marvelous is the toilets and amenities, which you get to have the Lanvin toiletries. All right, what a seamless way to switch topics. I'm taking you to have breakfast at the number 95 after taking you to the bathroom. Located on the 35th floor, you get to enjoy the same beautiful skyline of the Melbourne CBD, as well as some tourist destination like the St Patrick's Cathedral. I have never had one single bad coffee in Melbourne, but this egg Benedict is just well, that shouldn't be expected in a five-star hotel. Fortunately, their dinner has redeemed itself quite remarkably, like this lamb rack. All this green tea panna cotta with beetroot ice cream. Head over to the lobby lounge, and can you feel the Frenchness or chicness? Because just look at those old couture marbles, and of course, no afternoon tea at this hotel would be complete without the champagne and our great tea, as well as finger sandwiches and desserts. I was told that it's structurally impossible to accommodate a swimming pool in this hotel, but you still have the gym where you could sweat a lot. Of course, there's no better way to travel around the Melbourne CBD by using the trams, which is free of charge within the free tram zones. First place that I'm taking you to is the Docklands, where you can see Nutlet over there, where there are lots of famous stores inside where you could shop till you drop. Okay, don't tell the kids that there's a Toy World store here. No, don't tell them. Oh, ever heard of Bonds? It's an underwear brand in Australia, and I have to tell you, the underwear is really good. Well, I don't think it would be that desperate to shop at Uniqlo stores in Melbourne. Maybe the General Pants Company over there. Well, you can see, I'm more desperate to shop at Woolies. Last but not least, don't forget to grab a few of these babies at the souvenir stores. The second place that I'm taking you to is not a free tram zone, which means you have to pay, but it's all worth the payment. Well, I'm not talking about this Midsummer Pride Parade, which is held in St Kilda, but why not? And yes, we're at St Kilda now, which is a 30-minute tram journey from the Melbourne CBD, and now you're seeing the Esplanade Market, which is located in the seaside of St Kilda. Want to try these aromatherapy products? All these gluten dairy free products? All these spaghetti sauces? All these beautiful wood art? Of course, you can try the roller coaster at the Luna Park, or watch a film at the theater. But not for me. I'm heading back to the Ackland Street, where I'm enjoying the beautiful cakes there. The cake shops at the Atkins Street have all been established for over more than a hundred years, and the Atkins Cake Shop is the one that I would never miss every time I visit Melbourne. This vanilla slice is a must-try item for me, as well as the flat white. Of course, no trip to the St Kilda would be complete without walking along the promenade at the St Kilda Beach. But just don't try to swim out there because you wouldn't notice in the background it's quite windy, and of course the water is quite polluted. There are also a few restaurants at the seaside, and I can tell you, according to my experience a few years ago, the food there is actually quite good. 
but what never changes is always windy and always beautiful St. Kilda Pier. And of course, the most important thing to visit Melbourne during the tennis season is to go to the Rod Laver Arena to watch tennis live. I've got the tickets from the women's finals. Well, my final verdict of the Silverton Melbourne, well, everything is just okay, it's fine, but I would expect something more for a five-star hotel.